Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, thank you so much for uh, attending uh, this uh, October uh, webinar. We're going to be holding these uh, once a month. Um, so for those of you who have signed up uh, for this one, you'll be receiving an email sharing with you um, all of the next upcoming um, webinars that we have uh, posted um, up through March. Um, so please feel free to uh, join in to any one of these and please feel free to share that information um, and share that information with um, any of your colleagues or other family or clients that you have that you believe would uh, benefit. Um, so I'm really excited for this uh, first topic. Um, again, um, my name is Carla Sutter and I'm the Director of Operations for Synergy Home Care. We are a national uh, home care organization uh, working with uh, clients and families whose lives have been impacted by age or illness and are needing some assistance to remain um, in their homes, uh, wherever home may be. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to contact me um, after this uh, seminar, or please feel free to go to our uh, website at synergyhomecare.com. Um, I have uh, worked in uh, healthcare for 30 years um, as a social worker for, for many of those years and have worked with many uh, clients and families who have had changing experiences due to age or illness um, and that's where this particular topic um, came from for me um, because I think it's such a key um, area of, uh, of need. And I am just sorry, I am struggling with uh, trying to get my, um, my slide to move to the next one. There we go. All right. So I thought that it would be really beneficial, and, and it is for at least for me um, when I am kind of thinking about things, to have some visuals. Um, and, and I think that this topic, uh, talking about coping with life transitions and navigating change while maintaining control and direction, um, is really um, the most visual um, piece that I can think of is, is thinking about uh, boating. Um, and, and I myself am not a boater. Um, I, I don't really like being on, on a boat, um, but, but it really always gives the sense that um, those who, who are and working on water, um, which really is never um, predictable, um, are able to kind of find their their course. Um, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, you know, people have to really chart the course that they're they're going on, and um, often again, what looks like a perfect day um, can change very quickly, and oftentimes um, those changes can be weathered. Um, and you, you get ba uh, safely back to shore. But, but oftentimes um, things go so out of um, control of what you know, your experience, um, that you really find yourself in, in a very bad uh, way, in a, in a bad position. And, and that's what this is really all about. You know, for many of us, um, we have what those who are um, captains of, of boats have, which is a lighthouse. Um, our lighthouse oftentimes is um, our family, our support system, um, our health, um, our ability to comprehend and, and make um, decisions and, and set goals. Um, and, and oftentimes um, that works really well. Um, and it really does help to navigate us uh, through whatever is happening. Um, but there are times for whatever reason, and we're going to talk about that um, as we move forward, for whatever reason that that lighthouse um, light is, is off. Um, and, and maybe it's because where we have gotten those supports, they're not the right ones for the experience that we're going through right now. Um, maybe they are part of the transition and the change and, and they're not available to us because they're managing um, their own experiences and their own feelings about um, what's occurring. Um, but again, I think it's, it's important in our times of health um, as we are doing our best, as we're managing the best, is to always 
kind of look for um, that lighthouse, look for our lighthouse and, and know um, where they are um, and always kind of be checking um, that it's available to us. And, and for some of us, um, having to do that exercise, we come to the realization that we may need to really kind of build our own um, lighthouse, that we don't have um, the system in place um, right now um, to be able to do that. So I think it's all of this is an assessment of where we are at, um, whether we're thinking about for ourselves or for a family member or a client that we're working with, is how to help them through this. I always think it's helpful to kind of define some of the, the terms that we are um, looking at. Um, because I think oftentimes we, we know what a, the terminology is, um, but uh, we need to move, um, kind of have a better definition for it. Um, so change is really about becoming different. Um, it's examples of that is, is how colors change um, when they are exposed to the sun. Um, it's becoming transformed or converted. Um, it's passing gradually into something um, that is kind of the easiest change. Um, and transition is the process, the actual process or the period of time that that change is occurring. And I think it's interesting when we think about some of the synonyms that, that go with change, which are shift, leap, progression, development, and particularly the flux. Um, because I think that um, Flux is often a good word um, to define what we're going through when change happens. Um, but at other times, change happens and we are okay with it. Um, change is occurring all the time around us. And so what is it about the one change, kind of that straw that broke the camel's back, um, that made the transition difficult, that put us into um, a state of um, kind of not knowing of difficulty. And, and that's what this is really then all about. Um, one of the important things is normalizing change. I think we have in our head this idea that um, all change is bad. Um, and the reality is that change happens for a lot of really positive reasons. Um, and many things that are changing, um, we're very familiar with. Change is always occurring and we're used to it and it's pretty normal in, in everybody's day-to-day uh, -day life. Um, you know, it happens around us every single day. Seasons change every year. And after our first few falls, for instance, if you're living in the Midwest or in the Northeast, um, after the first few seasons of fall, you know what to expect. You know that your lawn is going to be covered with leaves and that you're going to have to, um, you know, hire someone or, or get the kids to go out and rake them. Uh, you know that with fall comes, um, you know, the, the seasons that and the holidays that you may enjoy the most or the decorating of the home that you enjoy the most. What gets us about change is the uncertainty that change can bring. You know, if we think about moving to a new climate and experiencing the change in seasons in that new client, it's then that we have to reacclimate ourselves before coming comfortable with that new normal. Um, I moved to uh, Arizona a few years ago from the Midwest, and you know, it was very odd during fall season um, not to have the uh, fall leaves as a clue to me as to kind of the, the new season we're in. Um, it, it didn't signal to me um, all the other things that fall used to represent. Uh, kids going back to school, um, holidays coming. Um, and it's taken me a couple of, of seasons here to recognize that this new normal of what fall season is isn't necessarily tied to the, the changing of the leaves, but more to the, the calendar and, and what's happening in the progression of, of that year. Um, and so it's really, again, important for us to recognize that change in itself is not a negative. Um, it, it's what the reason for that change and, um, 
and uh, the, the reason for the change and, and why and how we're, we're experiencing it. Um, while change is inevitable, it requires several things of us. Um, change, whether it's anticipated, like a retirement, or a conscious decision, like a move or a marriage, um, or is thrust upon us with little warning, like a diagnosis, like a new health diagnosis, it casts us into an unknown territory. It requires then new knowledge, skills, and behaviors. And this can be really difficult even when we're feeling our best, but becomes tougher when we have accompanying physical or emotional stressors occurring simultaneously which is why change again um, becomes so difficult because the change itself um, often changes our own ability to, to process the information. We get a diagnosis of, um, of a cancer diagnosis or um, something to that level, and at the same time we're trying to process it, we're now taking new medications that have changed our um, physical uh, kind of functioning. Um, we may be um, more exhausted, and so our thought processes um, are not um, as clear. And so that's why oftentimes change, while you've managed it well at other points in your life, become much more difficult because of the other things that are happening at the same time. I think it is really key for us to always remember that positive changes in our lives can create stress as well. Um, I think if we don't allow ourselves to recognize that positive events can create stress in our lives, then we kind of get concerned as it's happening and we don't normalize it in the same way. Um, and I think this is really true, especially when um, things like a, a marriage or a new child um, comes into our lives. Um, it is such a joyous time, um, but it can also be one of the most stressful times because, again, it's, it's changing every aspect of our day-to-day -day functioning. We're having to, you know, learn how to work with somebody else. We're having to compromise. We're having to adjust our, our sleep schedules, um, all of those kind of things. The other piece is that, um, again, we're having to completely learn some new um, knowledge and skills to um, adjust to this. Um, if we go back to the idea of having a new child, you're having to also kind of learn how to understand somebody else's uh, needs, how to um, translate what someone's uh, cry is or what, um, you know, what that um, kind of different uh, senses are happening when they're awake and when they're going to sleep. Um, and so that's really key that, again, it's about gaining the knowledge and the skills at the same time that the, the event is happening um, to be able to be successful. I think the other piece that is most difficult about um, change is that it's often not knowing what's going to happen next. You know, if you look at this picture, it's a it, for those who um, aren't on the webinar and are just calling in, um, it's a picture of a tent in the daytime. I love um, nature um, in the daytime. I love um, having and being in a tent in the daytime. But at nighttime, um, I am not a great night camper, which makes camping quite difficult. Um, and the reason that I, I believe I'm not as good at night is because my um, ability to sense what's happening around me um, is clouded and um, more difficult to be able to see because of the, the darkness. Um, what looked really beautiful, um, the trees that looked really beautiful during the day um, now look menacing at, at night. Um, the sound that I heard during the day and being able to connect it to the small little squirrel um, that was you know, playing in the trees at night, um, that same sound um, in my mind becomes a bear because I can't see um, the size of uh, the animal anymore. And so I'm having to rely on, on certain senses. I think that that's one of the same um, occurrences that happen with change 
that when we don't know and can't see the next steps of it, when we don't know how it's going to progress, um, when we can't see kind of the the end result and, and are we going to end up okay, um, we start putting in our own um, idea of what's going to happen next. And, and often we can be our own worst enemy and we often put in kind of the worst case scenario um, versus the best case scenario. And so I think this is a really, for me, as I was thinking about this seminar, um, this for me was really um, truly enlightening in terms of how I was able to kind of think about um, changes and transitions in my own life. Something that I have found um, really powerful over the last probably um, 15 years is this um, visual from uh, Stephen Covey um, from the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Um, you can go online and you can find um, a variety of versions of, of this drawing. Um, and, and I think it is really um, powerful. This, this started um, where I saw this at my, my workplace uh, years ago uh, back in Minnesota. And, and it was in all the meeting rooms, um, which I thought was really interesting um, of the, uh, the managers to kind of have this and, and think about what happens during a, a meeting time um, when a lot of ideas are being exchanged and a lot of um, emotion um, is is happening and then it really made sense when I took it into the personal and when I worked with um, clients in hospice um, it really began to make um, sense of some of their behaviors um, and reactions to things so what this is really saying is that in our lives there are things we can control things we can influence and things we cannot control and we often become the most disconnected and feeling um, the most flux, if we want to say, um, is when we try to put our energies into the wrong kind of bucket of control. Um, most of us, um, as, as human nature would find, is that we like to be in control of our, our situation. We like to be in control of our lives. Um, and when we're not in control, when we feel that there's a, a sense of um, inability to control something, we become more controlling. Um, and there's a big difference between having control and being controlling. Um, and that, I think, is where we, we need to start kind of um, this whole idea of transition and change from. When we can't control something, because we need and, and have a, a need to actually control things in our lives, we find other things around us to control. And often we find things that aren't the healthiest to um, control. For instance, um, this, this came to light when I had a, um, a hospice client who um, towards the end of his life um, certainly felt out of control. He couldn't control the, the progression of his illness and what was gonna happen. And so the one thing that he could control is the medications that he um, decided to take. And he stopped taking medications that were really managing his symptoms, um, relieving his pain, allowing him to be more alert and, and aware of his surroundings to be able to continue having those conversations um, with his friends and family. But that was the one thing he felt like he had control over, and so he stopped taking them. Um, it was really after having a lot of conversation um, with, with him and with he and his family to give him something else in his life that he felt that he could um, influence and had some level of control over so that he didn't feel like he needed to um, control something that in the end was, was causing him more harm, both um, physically and, and emotionally. Um, I think it's really key as, as you find yourself in situations where you feel like nothing's changing or you can't kind of get a grasp on, on where life is going, is to first think about what am I trying and putting my energy, my time, my resources into? And if it's something that I have no control over, what are the other things that stem from that that I have some influence over that I can begin to kind of have some improvement on this. Um, I find this was really helpful for me as I was raising um, 
a teenager because again there were so many things I wanted to um, get her to kind of learn and understand on, on my timing um, and and as teenagers you know they they, they don't um, and I was trying and working harder than she was on things that I really didn't have any control over anymore I could now had to switch my energy into trying to influence some of these decisions versus having the same control I did when she was um, a child. I think the other piece as we think about the, the level of control we have and how we've managed changes in our life is to really think about um, the legacy of um, kind of stress management in our um, family. Um, and, and what I mean by that is in your, in your life with both your present family set up as well as, as, a, as in childhood, um, how did you manage stress? Um, how did you see your um, guides, your, your parents, your influencers uh, manage stress? And, and I think if we assess that, it's really going to give us some indication as to what we go back to now. Um, maybe things that we realize we didn't do well at and now we have an opportunity to make changes during our next transition. Um, but I think we, we know and can learn so much um, from what we have come from, um, both good and bad, um, both the things we want to replicate um, as well as the things we want to um, do differently. So really thinking about the legacy um, in your family of, of origin and your, your present family makeup again as to how did you get through difficult times um, and then again how did you see the people that you look up to who you feel um, have the best way of navigating their own life how do they do that and, and really trying to learn from that. There's several things that can happen um, for us to be able to help ease um, these transitions. Um, and the first is really being able to ask questions. Um, the more we understand about the why, the what, the when, the where, and the how, um, the better we can be. Um, and, and again, every situation, um, we can do this. And, and this doesn't have to be a long process um, because again, changes happen so quickly in our lives. Um, and some of them require us to adjust very quickly. Um, and so, and we act um, as quickly. Um, so we often are doing this without realizing. You know, when we have to change lanes on a highway because we have immediately seen a danger in front of us um, and now we have to shift the car um, that's happening very quickly but we don't even realize that our brain is going through all of these kind of questions uh, why am I having to do this what's just happening when do I have to make the decision where am I gonna go how am I gonna do it how far am I gonna um, move the, um, the the car over and and move the wheel we don't even realize that we all have this capability. We all do it every day. We just often don't name it. Um, and so we, we forget that we have that skill level. But if we slow it down, if we have an opportunity with certain um, concerns, if we have that opportunity to make the adjustments um, in, a, in a more kind of drawn out way, then we really can do this analysis, um, the why, the what, the when, the where, and the how, and, and how to do it better. We have to think about having an organized way of getting updates on this new information. Um, and, and whether that is because we have a shared change that's happening for many of us and we want to all make sure we're on the same page um, such as in a family when you know a, an elder um, a, a parent maybe has a, a health crisis maybe only one person is in town um, to, to be at the doctors the rest of the family needs that same information to know what they have to do to adjust to this change. So maybe it's about getting a newsletter or an email or some kind of posting about what's happening. Um, 
but each of us have a way to think about um, an organized way of getting information. We also need to keep a perspective about the situation. Um, language can influence our adjustment. Um, it's really easy to make a situation bigger than it is um, and think that this is the way it always happens if we use that language. And it's, it's really powerful, the language we say out loud um, and the language that's kind of floating in our, our head um, will influence the way we can we manage. So if we're using language such as, it always is this way, or if only, if I could, versus language that has a sense of mastery to it. Um, I will, um, I can, um, that's really important. So we need to understand the best and the worst case scenarios um, as another piece, is really thinking about what could the worst thing be. Um, so I understand that there's a few people that are having some issues with the hearing of the um, webinar. I apologize. Um, I just saw um, somebody say this. So um, if, if somebody else could type in, is anybody else having any difficulty with the, um, the, the audio? OK. All right. So it may have been, all right, great may have been just a couple of people who are having problems with um, calls, um, their particular call. Sorry about that. Um, but understanding best and worst case scenarios. Um, you know, I think oftentimes we don't want to ask certain questions because we don't want to hear the answer. And that's certainly what can happen, for instance, with a, a health diagnosis. Um, so there are situations, for instance, where you know, a diagnosis occurs and um, we don't want to ask the doctor that, that looming question, you know, what could be the worst case scenario? What could be the outcome of this? Um, um, so we need to ask questions because if we don't, we're often going to put in the worst case scenario. Um, and so it's kind of that idea with, um, I showed with the, the picture of the camping site. You know, in the dark, we make up things that um, are a lot worse than what the reality is, is telling us. So really important to understand best and worst case scenarios and um, really be able to ask questions of the people that have the information. Um, yes, it may not be the news you want, but it's news then that you can make better decisions based off of versus our own assumptions. Many of us don't even realize we're stressed. Um, it's something that often builds slowly until the signs are unmistakable. Um, and I think, again, we as a society um, are pretty well versed in stress. Um, we, we live it, again, in, in little dosages um, every day. Um, how many of you had to drive through traffic to get to um, work today? How many of you had multiple emails that had come in over the weekend um, that now were kind of all needing something all at the same time? Um, we don't realize how much stress we have. Um, and I think it's really important for us to acknowledge that stress and know kind of what our triggers are, um, what makes us more stressed, um, what relieves stress, and to put those in place on a regular basis. You know, it, it doesn't help to react to something when it is at its peak. Um, you know, it, it doesn't help when you are in the throes of um, f the flu to say, you know what, I, I should really be drinking more um, orange juice and getting my vitamin C. Um, it does help that every day um, you're doing something to prepare your body and to increase your, your immune system, et cetera. So how we recognize stress in our life and how we kind of set our expectations of what is a normal amount for us and what's too much um, is really important. 
stress impacts everyone differently. Um, changes in sleep, changes in eating, concentration, emotional um, uh, lability, um, where um, again, you are either crying all the time, stressed, um, anger, um, whatever it is, um, kind of everybody is walking around on eggshells because they're not sure how you're gonna react. Um, and reactions that are not typical. You know, I think we all know for ourselves, or certainly we have someone in our life who is our kind of um, mirror as to how we're doing. And I think it's important that as something's changed in our life, to be able to turn to those people to say, you know, right now I may not be able to be a good judge of how I'm doing um, because I'm too close to this but I need you to tell me if I seem um, to be reacting differently than I have in the past to um, other stressful situations. Um, and if I am reacting in a way that is really out of character for how I've reacted um, previously. And that's difficult to do, um, and we have to give the people in our life that um, allowance to do that um, because very few people will say that to somebody unless they've been given permission to do so. So really important if something is going on that could be um, an area of increased stress for you um, is to again give permission to those around you to kind of monitor that and help guide you on how you're doing. Um, really be keen um, about what a normal sleep pattern is for you um, so that you know when it's not. Um, what is your normal eating pattern? Um, and, and that's not always gonna be judged by the scale. Um, it could just be judged by the nutritional value of what you're, what you're eating. Um, so that's really important. Again, all of this, I'm, I'm hoping that, that the majority of, of those who are listening to this um, session um, that the majority of you are coming to this not because you are in the throes of a really stressful um, transition, um, but that you're proactively um, learning this before the stressful situation happens, um, because really that is the, the best and only time to be able to kind of incorporate this because you, again, have your best um, faculties, um, both your best physical health as, as well as your best emotional and mental health, um, to be able to kind of listen and encompass um, and, and incorporate this into um, your daily uh, living. Coping strategies. Um, I think that there are a variety of, of coping strategies that um, can take place. Um, and of, of course, uh, another coping strategy is going to be good eating, um, good exercise patterns, good sleep. Um, as much as those are the things that change during stress, it's also the thing that can keep us um, in the best place. I, I don't think there's any um, session that you can do about really anything any longer about you know physical or emotional health that doesn't um, involve including those um, things uh, you know better sleep better nutrition and and better exercise um, and again this isn't the time to necessarily um, start the three day a week or four day a week gym program but it is the time to do a little bit of active uh, motion and movement and, and whether that's a, a walk around the, the block um, or just getting out and gardening or doing something physical, um, any of those things are gonna, be, are gonna be helpful and healthful as well. So some of the coping strategies for um, transition during a time of transition and, and, and coping uh, mechanisms is researching that upcoming change or transition. Again, we don't always have the luxury of being able to be prepared, but many times we, we do. Um, we just don't realize. You know, we, we are all aging, for instance, 
Um, we're all going to be experiencing changes due to um, age that are part of normal aging and, and also part of aging that um, not everyone experiences, but, but many experience. And we don't have to wait for that situation to happen. We don't have to wait for, you know, the, the, the bone density test to tell us that we have, um, you know, we're, that we're losing bone mass. We don't have to wait um, to, to be told um, that we have early signs of, of uh, memory or cognitive um, changes. There's things that we can um, know that we have some risk factors just by that, that age. Um, that we can start researching on our own and start looking at signs and symptoms and, and things we can do to, again, influence um, and minimize those changes. Being mindful of your physical and mental health. Um, and I think that for many of us, we don't operate on a day-to-day -day basis truly having a sense of what our peak physical and mental health is and means. Um, that we, we're not always as in tuned to our bodies um, and our mind. Um, and so we only are thinking about it when we are run down. Um, we only think about it when we feel that stress, when we are um, going into a, a time of high anxiety or a time of depression. Um, and really think about, again, goes back to kind of legacy, but knowing what our triggers are from our past. Um, when have we also been in a, in a place where our health has suffered because of, of changes in our lives? How did we manage that? Um, really thinking about how we um, experienced it and then what we can do, again, similarly or differently. If we already know that we have um, a diminished um, physical health or a diagnosis such as, you know, um, um, high cholesterol, uh, high blood pressure, um, all of the insulin uh, deficiency, and we are going into a time of more stress, we have to be even more aware of what we're doing because we already know that our bodies are already um, compromised um, without um, being um, keenly taken, away, uh, taken care of. And so if stress is going to limit our ability to really monitor what's happening, we really have to, to do that work for it um, and for our health uh, prior. It's, it's maybe a conversation with the physician to say, look, my mom is going through um, some health changes. I'm gonna be kind of having to do a lot of traveling and leaving work and my kids. I know I'm gonna be increasing my stress. I'm concerned given that I've had high blood pressure in the past, are there some things proactively I can be doing? What symptoms should I be looking at? Um, is there some medications that I should be on to kind of help um, maximize my, my body's ability to, to manage this? Um, so again, understanding what our issues are um, allow us to ensure that we don't um, fall into the same kind of traps. Taking time to relax. And, and I think during a time of transition or change um, and stress, this is sometimes the hardest thing because we feel that we don't have the time. Um, we don't have an opportunity to do that. But we do have to understand, again, you know, that, that warning that the uh, airlines give you, um, you know, in a time of crisis when the, when the oxygen masks release to place the mask on ourselves before placing it on someone else that needs our assistance. And this is truly kind of the, the one time that I think the airlines um, really give a really good message and, and there's a real positive. Um, I think we can learn a lot from that. It doesn't take a lot. It can take 10 minutes to really revive us and give us the best opportunity. Taking a short nap, um, taking a walk around the block, um, coloring. Um, coloring is, you know, kind of the new craze and there's a whole adult coloring craze. Um, uh, Synergy Home Care did a, a whole coloring um, program and, and continues to have that on our, on our Synergy Home Care website um, because we recognized the benefit that coloring can have in the lives of seniors or those who are dealing with health concerns. Um, and, and as a community of, of adults, we're really seeing that um, all over. Um, how coloring can just take us away f it for a moment um, from the experience that we are having um, and really kind of provide us the same meditative 
um, benefit that um, you know a yoga class could. Um, limit change, and and while that seems kind of um, uh, difficult to do during some periods of change, it's not in in many ways. Um, if you know you're going to be experiencing um, a change of a job, um, for instance, or your um, oldest uh, child is going uh, um, leaving home, it may not be the best time then to go, you know what, I think I need to move right now as well. Or I think I need to um, do X, Y, Z. That's going to be another big change in my life. Um, so that we limit how many factors we're trying to deal with. Now, that doesn't always um, happen. Um, there are changes that occur that we can't limit the other things because there are kind of a, a cascade effect um, that, that occurs. Um, so we have to kind of know that, but at the same time, anything we do have control over and we can influence, we need to put things in, a, in the right time frame. The other is talking with others, both personal and professional support. Um, and, and this is, again, some people are good at um, asking for help and, and getting guidance from others. And some people really don't have that experience. Um, they feel um, some level of shame if they need to ask for assistance. Um, they don't want to let others know that they're not in a good place or that they um, are not as strong as, as maybe they um, others thought they were. Um, particularly for those of you on this call who are in the helping professions, um, in healthcare yourself, um, no matter what your role, I think it becomes even more difficult. Um, many of us are great helpers, um, but we're not very good patients. Um, and this comes to play as well when we're talking about managing um, stress and, and change. Um, so really talking with others, um, whether it is in an anonymous group, um, online now, there's lots of opportunity for going on to um, kind of group sessions online and finding support groups, um, both again in, in, a, in a group setting um, publicly and, and online more anonymously. Um, getting professional assistance with a therapist um, for even a short period of time, um, or just, again, talking with um, other people in, in your life. Taking action. Um, this is excerpted from a, um, a site, Designing for Life's Changes, which is, um, was a, a great um, resource. Um, and again, it kind of goes back to some of those things that we need to be able to hang on to, um, to be able to influence what's going on in our life. Again, not necessarily control it all, but influence it. And it goes back to, and I think we've said it probably um, three times already, how important just having information is um, to this whole process. Um, the more information we gather in whatever way that is, um, the more feeling of mastery we're going to have on any change or transition. Um, so take that lead. Um, allow for ebb and flow. Again, everybody's going to have good days and bad days um, during these times of transition. Um, and kind of recognize that. Um, I think we sometimes, we have a good day, and then we are shocked um, when the next day we, we wake up almost exhausted, I think, from the, the positive energy that's been happening because it was such a, a unique situation to this um, kind of change time. But uh, recognize that there is going to always be ebb and flow um, in our lives. Um, get personal. So it's really important to stay close to the situation. Um, and again, that may be if you are not the one experiencing it directly, um, to make sure that you're staying close to the person that is so you're, you're getting knowledge um, from them. Um, or if you are personally involved, staying close to the, per the other people that have some influence on what's happening. Um, if it's a health situation, um, making sure you're, you're staying close and keeping lines of communication open with the medical team. Um, if it's a job transition, making sure that you know who in the, in the new company um, is your best uh, reference and, and resource. Um, so whatever it is, there's somebody who is there to be your guide. They may not recognize themselves in that way, um, but that's what their role really has become. 
um, smooth the way. Um, so really break it up. Um, it's really hard when we have a situation going on to expect that we're going to be able to kind of solve it and get from point A to B without a lot of little steps um, in between. And, and this is true when we're talking about any kind of goal setting, but it's really true when we're, we're thinking about the steps that we need to take in our own lives to, to manage and get through a time of change and transition, um, is put some little steps uh, along the way. You know, an example of, of that would be, again, a health situation where the, the physician may be telling you that you need to make um, all of these lifestyle changes. Um, is really finding out from them which is the one, if, if I could start doing one thing um, in this next month to influence um, my health status, which is the first thing that you would have me do? Because it's very difficult to expect at a time when we're already kind of depleted emotionally from the stress to then be able to also start a, a whole diet plan to stop smoking, to stop drinking, to um, start exercising, whatever it is that's going to influence our health, to do all of those at one time. Um, so again, we need to kind of break it up. And, and again, connecting to the community. I, I think we can't say that enough that the support from others um, is, is key during any um, life change and transition. And often again, it's when we don't um, want um, to have to talk with others um, or the exhaustion of having to explain ourselves to others. Um, that's why I think sites such as Caring Bridge that came out um, many years ago now um, because of um, a family who had an experienced a, um, an illness of a child and so many people were, were wanting to be a support and be there for them, but they couldn't keep repeating the same story over and over again. And um, so they, this Caring Bridge uh, site got started so that they could tell their story to those in their sphere of kind of influence and support um, one time and then people could share their thoughts, their feelings, their resources with the family who could then, when they had those moments of ability to kind of process it, could then reach out or ask somebody else to reach out. And I think that idea of that Caring Bridge site has translated now um, to many other ways that, that we do that in times of, of, of transition. And we have so many um, technological advances available to us so that if we can't verbally um, commit to communicating to somebody else that there's other ways we can communicate that information to to connect. So from change to growth, I mean that's really what is is all about and, and again I think there's stages to this um, and and just like with any staging um, you know, some of us find ourselves kind of uh, going um, very quickly from one stage to another. Um, sadly, sometimes we, we have to go backwards um, because we, we thought that we had it down. We thought we knew the steps and, and we didn't. Um, and that's okay. Um, but the first one, again, to, to go from change and transition to growth um, is really knowledge. Um, this is the stage where you may decide to learn more about what is occurring. You acquire information, process that, and figure out how it all fits together. Um, again, growth can be sporadic and uncoordinated, and, and mistakes are common in terms of us getting used to how we kind of manage it. And again, helpful support is, is key. I think about this as um, infancy, um, because really, um, in infancy, we're doing the same thing. Um, babies are, are gathering information from their environment. They're making mistakes. They, they think they're ready to stand up and, and they end up falling. Um, and the next time they stand up, they probably stand up where they're next to a chair um, because they, they somehow have figured out that they need that kind of added support. But this is really the infancy stage. And if we think about how supportive and kind um, we are to, to babies as they're learning, um, we have to provide that same level of kindness um, and, and um, um, time to ourselves um, for, for this same learning process. The next stage 
um, is adolescence or application. Um, we're starting to apply what we're learning about this change in our life. We're experimenting with new ways to live with the change and we start shifting our perspective. Um, we see this in, in individuals who are living with um, chronic illness um, and they recognize that you know, this may be for this period as good as it gets and they figure out how to work within it. They adjust their environment to give them the greatest um, ability to, to manage it. Um, and they recognize that some other adjustments may need to be made um, down the line, um, but they'll course direct or course correct um, when it's needed. Um, and again, this is really like adolescence and, and um, our teenagehood. Um, we're taking more responsibility for how we react to the changes. Um, so we recognize that um, if we don't do um, as much to influence what's happening, we're not going to get the same results. Um, and so again, I, I, I like the idea of thinking about this growth um, through these periods of transition um, as a developmental stages because I think it allows us to be a little kinder um, to ourselves um, through that process. Integration. So this is really our adulthood. This is when we take full responsibility for our actions and our feelings. Um, we're not needing as much support and affirmation, but we're still making those connections. You know, at some point um, for most of us, even in the, the most difficult um, change transitions, um, we come to a place of kind of peace um, and resilience um, because we've had to adjust to the, the um, newness of it. Um, and now again, it, it becomes that new normal, even in the most dire of situations. And, and I think, you know, I certainly saw this in my work um, with hospice clients um, who had to adjust to, you know, certainly some of the most devastating um, news and, and certainly some of the most um, difficult um, medical conditions but they came through those stages of um, adjustment and growth um, through transition to a place of not acceptance that this necessarily was their their kind of time, um, but a recognition that they wanted to um, use that time that they did have left um, in the most productive of ways. Um, and so I think that spurned and spurred on their um, adjustment and their growth through the change process. Does that happen to everybody? No. And the reality is that we can do all the right things and, and still not get the result that we want, um, certainly in, in terms of kind of um, end result, but also in terms of how we are managing it. Um, and, and those are the times when, again, we probably need um, more support that we may not be self-directing, but where others may be bringing it in to us almost as, a, as an intervention on, on that transition and change um, because we are struggling um, so, so much with that. I think um, I, I have always, again, I'm a, I'm a really visual person, and so um, I remember um, somebody who um, named their daughter uh, Willow, and when I heard the reason behind it is they said that um, willow trees are the, are the strongest um, trees, that they can, they're designed in a way that they will bend, um, but they never break. And so I think it's a really um, powerful um, imagery to, to use, um, thinking about um, each one of our own life uh, transitions um, in terms of how we can manage and react. And, and again, that, that sense of kind of mastery even in the, in the worst of situations. Um, I really liked this, um, this quote from Wayne Dyer, um, and I thought it fit really well to the willow tree, but when powerful forces push you in any direction, bow rather than fight, lean rather than break, and allow yourself to be free of a rigid set of rules and in doing so, you'll be preserved and unbroken. Um, and I, I think that that um, saying is, is such a great way of experiencing 
um, change and transition. Um, because again, it, it is not a panacea for it, but it, I think, gives um, a sense of um, hope um, in a, a time of difficulty. I want to um, have left a, a few minutes for any comments or questions. So if anybody wants to type anything in um, to the, the question um, box, uh, please feel free to do so. Um, again, if you are needing a certificate of attendance, um, please um, email us um, at uh, Carla Sutter at SynergyHomeCare.com. There will also be a, an email that you'll get through the GoToWebinar um, that you can respond to and, and ask for that. Please just uh, provide your um, email address so that can be um, attached to it. Um, each one of the webinars that we'll be presenting each month um, will include a um, certificate of attendance um, that can be emailed to you. Um, and again, if you'd like to learn more about uh, Synergy Home Care services and how they can assist you or a client or patient, um, please uh, reach out to us. And if you would like to have a um, session or some type of seminar um, in your uh, local, um, with a local audience, please let me know that as well. And we will absolutely um, assist you in getting that set up with one of our local offices. Um, I'll wait a few more minutes to see if there are any um, other, uh, any questions that are um, being asked. And I also want to share that the uh, next webinar is going to be November 16th. It's a Wednesday um, at uh, 3 o'clock uh, Eastern, and it is on The Talk, um, Crucial Conversations with um, our family members who are needing care. So um, one of the questions that just came up, and I'm, I'm hoping that I'm understanding um, the question is, uh, can, can I relate this to someone with uh, dementia? Um, yes, I think that um, there's a couple of things, and, and certainly depending on the stage um, that someone has, um, first of all, trying to do a, an assessment with their physician or, or any other care provider to, to know what is the most impacted um, cognitive kind of function for that, that individual um, to kind of understand that first, um, to then be able to understand how um, change um, uh, kind of uh, relieving and, and minimizing some of those changes and transitions can, can help. Um, certainly, um, a lot of times individuals um, with uh, dementia um, really have a difficult time transitioning from one thing to another. And, and, and for, for many, that can be just in terms of their day-to-day -day activities. Um, so always kind of sharing in a communicative way what's going to be happening next. Um, and whether that is through words, whether that is through pictures, um, whether that is through kind of a, a physical guiding of that next step, um, I think is, is really um, helpful. Um, so that's one, one area. Um, the other is, again, to allow people to um, have their, their strengths utilized. And I, I think oftentimes in, with anybody with a um, diagnosis is we often try to protect them so much um, from things that we stop going to them and, and asking um, for any guidance from them. Um, we try to do more for them um, in their time than, than asking anything of them. And, and for many, um, they, they really miss that. Um, so we have to make sure that, again, we're including people, um, asking questions in a way that certainly they can understand um, to find out you know, what is making sense for them and not. Um, we recently um, had a, an opportunity to have a gentleman come and speak with our, um, our system who is, was recently diagnosed with um, uh, early onset um, dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, and he found his way of adjusting to the change and transition was speaking about it. 
um, and he has been um, out on the quote unquote circuit with the uh, National Alzheimer's um, Association. They have many speakers like this. Um, and, and still has the, the capability um, really um, beautifully um, to be able to express what's happening. And while his language may begin to erode a bit in terms of the, the level of it, um, he's still really able to talk about um, what's happening for him. And he and his family um, early on knew that at some point they may need care. So they began to talk to care providers when he still had the opportunity to be able to be part of that decision. Um, they even toured um, memory care facilities. Um, and, and really ask some of those difficult questions. So again, there's, there's ways to be able to, to do that. Um, so uh, asking if the slide presentation will be made available, um, this webinar will be out on uh, YouTube. Um, we have a, a Synergy Home Care YouTube channel um, and it can be um, viewed there. Um, so uh, I encourage you to, to go to that. If you would like to share it with somebody else, um, please do so. Um, and along with this one, there, there's four others uh, presently on that YouTube channel um, that were done um, talking a lot about Alzheimer's um, and dementia and, and family care. So um, definitely go to um, our YouTube channel at Synergy Home Care and YouTube, and this will be up uh, within the next few days. All right, so it looks like those are the end of the questions. Um, and I really appreciate everybody's time and uh, enjoyed being able to have this conversation. Again, any questions, um, please reach out uh, to us here. And I would uh, love to be able to talk with any of you individually about any needs that you may have. Um, so thank you so much. And uh, again, look forward to having you all at our November 16th webinar. Thank you.